Hello, Sweet Home Arizona. All right, I was very pleased to see last night. Uh, I just, periodically, even if I'm done recording for the day, I'll, I'll check in, check in on the GP and uh, just the news and some of my favorite sources. I do scan the Fox News headlines. Uh, occasionally, there's something useful there, occasionally. Uh, and then I'll scan the real politics headlines, and occasionally there I'll find something interesting and useful for for my channels um but on the gateway pundit they had dave mustaine of megadeth all right i was a metalhead i am a metalhead i love thrash metal and i was i lived in northern california and i had a friend who was kind of in the scene or friends with them i just remember him telling a story of one day he's was riding in a car with a mutual friend of ours. It's, a, it's his friend, but uh, I know the guy too. Uh, and that guy was friends with Kirk Hammett, the guitar player who replaced Dave Mustaine in Megadeth, or in Mount Metallica, sorry. Dave Mustaine was the founding member, one of the founding members of Metallica. And he was kicked out of the band before their first album came out. And he went on to form it, Megadeth. And then... Uh, Metallica replaced Dave Mustaine with Kirk Hammett. My friend was in those circles. My friend is the one who turned me on to that music. I heard it all before it became popular, became huge. I loved them both, uh, Megadeth and Metallica, but I, I kind of had a, a favoritism toward Megadeth. I just, I think he's a better writer, um, songwriter. He wrote all the songs in Metallica's first album. He wrote three of the songs, at least three of the songs on Metallica's second album, and he is uncredited on a couple of songs, but uh, he claims to have written on their third album. So he is responsible for their success, partially responsible for their success. And then when he creates his own other band, Megadeth, it's also huge, not as huge as Metallica. Proof is in the pudding. The guy is a creative genius. But this is all before I was a Christian. You know, I was like 13, 14 years old when this music started coming out, was listening to it. And then I became a Christian at 18 and I stopped listening to that music. I just, I stopped listening. Uh, and I was in a band when I was 17 in high school and we were in a metal band and we did Megadeth and we did Iron Maiden. We did Metallica. We did, uh, some Black Sabbath, you know, heavy music. We did one Megadeth song. It was called Peace Sells, but who's buying? And I remember the last time I played that song in a, with the band. Um, actually I had quit the band and I ran into them at a party. They were playing at a party. And everybody at the party was like, get up there and sing, get up there and sing. And the brother of the lead guitarist was in was in this new version of the band. He's like, come on, come on. So I went up there and we sang Peace Sells, But Who's Buying by Megadeth. That's just a fun memory. It was the end of high school, kind of a after, after graduation party. Um, fast forward, I become a Christian about a year after this and stopped listening to that kind of music for the most part. And then, you know, sometime later, I'm like, okay, uh, you don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. There's art there. God is the creator of art. Um, and it's the messaging that that's the issue. So you can appreciate the music. And if, you, as long as you're aware of the messaging and you can rewrite the lyrics, no, but, I, you know, out of interest, I, over the years, I remember seeing a video about the big four. So Metallica is the big metal band. They're the biggest of all metal bands in history. And then it was Megadeth was the number two. And then uh, Slayer and Anthrax. So these, these four big metal acts that all came out at the same time. They all toured, toured together, so they all knew each other, and they were the top four metal acts, and I was a fan of all four of them. So I, when they, they, I don't know, it was like 10 years ago, maybe 15 years ago, they came together to do a tour. And I remember watching some of the behind-the-scenes footage, and I, I remember seeing Dave Mustaine, and I, editing is editing, but, but I just had this feeling like he was kind of walking on his own, and I could, he just kind of had this, I don't know, difference to him, not different from what he was, but just different than the other guys. Right. I didn't, I didn't think he had changed from before, but it's like, there's something about him. And here I'm a Christian at this time and I'm just sensing something about him. I'm like, 
Now, what is, what is, what is different about him than these other guys? He wasn't hanging out with the other guys. Come to find out, he's, he became a, became a Christian. You know, the guy became a Christian. I find I have a, a good friend of mine that's kind of connected to him. And he goes to the church and he's very vocal. And he's and and then after all this time, I go this was maybe a year ago. I go on YouTube and I look up that song, Peace Sells, but who's buying? The first line, the first lyrics after all these years, I used to sing this song in concert as a high schooler. The very first lyrics. In peace sells, but who's buying? What do you mean I don't believe in God? I talk to him every day. <laughs> what do you mean I don't believe in God? I talk to him every day. What the heck? I was right there the whole time. Full circle. I, I want to meet this guy. I feel like I'm going to meet him at some point. I, you know, He's kind of a musical hero to me, especially now that I know he's a Christian. Uh, but he's also politically... He's up on stage saying the right thing. Uh, you know, you know, artists lead the way. And also in that, that song, Peace Sells But Who's Buying, the chorus goes, if there's a new way, I'll be the first in line. But it better work this time. And it's political. Even back then, in the, that was in the mid 80s when that song came out. Peace sells, but who's buying? And it's it's a commentary, a political commentary, geopolitical commentary on the war machine, on the uh, military-industrial complex. Peace sells, but who's buying? Right? Who's going to pay for peace? Guns, guns that make a lot more money than, you know, I don't know, peace symbols. So, there, there's my Megadeth story. Um, very happy to see one of my artistic heroes. I can still feel good about liking this guy because he's saying the right things. Imagine those Biden voters in his audience when they're chanting F Biden. That's how you convert people, right? People love art more than politicians. And they're like, what do these guys know that I didn't know? Huh? What does Dave Mustaine know that I didn't know? That's how you convert people. And that's my mission. It's create art. Bring people into the fold. Show them the truth.